This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. Native leaders, grassroots groups, and advocates across the country addressed missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in 2019 and vowed to continue working on the issue in the new year. A handful of states have formed groups to examine the issue. The state of New Mexico's task force on missing and murdered Indigenous women held its first meeting in Albuquerque in November. The task force will determine the scope of the problem, identify barriers, and develop partnerships. Lynn Trujillo is New Mexico's Cabinet Secretary of Indian Affairs. Really at the heart of it, it's about individuals, people, their loved ones, um, our sisters, our mothers who aren't here. And so um, I'm honored to be chairing the task force and to begin these discussions and hopefully bring healing for some families out there. The task force is expected to report to the governor and state lawmakers by November 2020. On the national level, President Trump in November signed an executive order establishing a task force on missing and murdered indigenous people, launching Operation Lady Justice. With Operation Lady Justice, we will bring new hope to Native American communities across the nation. We will deliver justice for the victims, closure for the families, and safety to those in harm's way. Tribal leaders in attendance at the White House signing ceremony praised the move, but some Native women's advocates later voiced concerns about the lack of input from families and grassroots groups. Prior to President Trump's signing of the executive order, Attorney General William Barr traveled to Montana, where he met with the tribes to announce Justice Department actions as reporter Aaron Bolton tells us. The attorney general met with tribal officials from the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes to announce the Justice Department's new approach to curbing violence against indigenous people. The department will facilitate more coordination between the FBI, tribal, and state law enforcement agencies. There will also be efforts to collect nationwide data. Now, as I said this morning, uh, this is not a panacea. This is a step in the right direction, but we're going to have a lot more work to do working together. For National Native News, I'm Aaron Bolton. In 2019, Native young people advocated for environmental issues, from Native youth holding rallies in South Dakota to a First Nations teen speaking before world leaders in New York to a young man traveling to Spain for a climate summit in December. As Wyoming Public Radio's Melody Edwards reports, the Northern Arapaho Youth Delegate talked about indigenous knowledge in Madrid. Northern Arapaho member Micah Lott, who goes by Big Wind, participated in panels describing how climate change is affecting their life back home on the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming. Right now what we can see is like within the next 100 years, Wyoming's temperatures are going to look more like Texas. And so that's going to change our entire terrain. And within the next 50 years, our glaciers are going to be gone. And that scares me because that's where replenishes all of our rivers. Big Wind says it's not just Wyoming that's reliant on fossil fuels for its economy, but both tribes on the Wind River Reservation as well. Traditional ecological knowledge isn't being taken as seriously as it should be in climate discussions, Big Wind says. What I want to do and what this delegation wants to do is to be able to amplify those voices, our voices, so that we can have collaborative solutions, so that we can have blended knowledge. For National Native News, I'm Melody Edwards. And I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by PrairieEdge.com where you can find a full selection of Pendleton products, traditional ledger art, beadwork and quillwork, as well as a complete line of Native books, music and movies in Rapid City or online at PrairieEdge.com. Wobila. Support by Freedom Lodge, inviting you to the 200-hour Intertribal Historical Trauma Masterclass 2020 when you can learn a body-based approach to trauma reconciliation. There is no charge for tribal members. Registration deadline is March 2nd at freedomlodge.org. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.